Oh, thank you, uh, O&M partners, for inviting me to uh, give this presentation. This is uh, called Terra Factories and Lithium Geopolitics. It's largely focused on lithium, uh, but uh, touches again on the broader, I guess, battery thematic. Uh, RK Equity has been in business 20 years. The last 11, we focused significantly on lithium battery materials developers. This is uh, a listing of a number of clients. We've done advisory, capital raising, research, or, or and very often investing work. Nothing you're hearing is financial advice. I'm not a broker dealer or registered investment advisor. I wrote in June a note called Lithium, a noble investment pursuit. Uh, lithium ion battery is a 30 year overnight success. Uh, these three gentlemen won the Nobel Prize. Uh, the killer app is the lithium ion battery that's fueling an energy transition of EV, solar, and, and wind you know, storage. Um, but the lithium industry is very, very small. It's uh, only about 300,000 tons, uh, about 3 billion in revenue last year. That's up from 1 billion about five or six years ago, but is in ludicrous growth mode and is expected to be pre-battery day from Tesla, uh, was meant to be about 2 million tons or 20 to 30 billion in revenue um, by 2030. It's an opaque, nuanced, secretive you know, industry as well, um, but there's opportunities if you get to know it to make a lot of money. Over the summer, uh, you know, and in September, a, a Tesla revolution is rocking USA capital markets. So Tesla raised $5 billion in September and have now been profitable for five quarters. The stock has quintupled and, you know, no one would have thought about this, uh, you know, in, in the peak of COVID, March, April, but, uh, you know, the revolution is accelerating. Lithium has had starts and stops. Again, I've been in this in 11, uh, for 11 years. I call lithium 1.0 during the Obama-Biden, you know, administration. You know, they had stimulus in 2009 and 10. Uh, that, that petered out. That was like the Nissan Leaf. Then you had lithium 2.0, which uh, kind of ended in 2018. As we're in lithium 3.0, there's a debate within the lithium community. Is lithium a commodity or is it a uh, specialty chemical? And that goes into what multiple you would pay for it. So Albemarle typically uh, um, seeks to be valued at 12 to 15 times EBITDA. But if you're an iron ore company or a diversified uh, you know, miner like Rio Tinto, you're typically trading at six times EBITDA. So this is highly relevant. In my opinion, though, uh, it's not either it's neither uh, commodity or specialty, but it's actually a specialty commodity. There's a the carbonate and there's hydroxide, and the specialty hydroxide is where you want to be. Um, and these are for you know high nickel content cars that Tesla and other Western OEMs are making. The sexy cars. So on the right here, you have what I call sexy nickel. You know that's the Model S, three X, and Y. And then the massive nickel intensity, Cybertruck and Semi, these all require lithium hydroxide. So there's a hydroxide surge. And within, and lithium is produced in two principal ways, hard rock and brine. And there are two other ways, clay and alternative brines that are out there. Lots of choice of companies trying to develop there. But Elon Musk, NVW, NBMW are largely saying hard rock is the preferred feedstock for specialty hydroxide lithium. Here's a map of uh, demand, uh, or a map of US OEMs. All of these demand lithium hydroxide. Likewise in Europe, ma massive mega factories going up, primarily fueled you know, with lithium hydroxide. Here's a mix between carbonate and hydroxide. Carbonate has historically been the biggest um, market. You know, It's in your laptop, it's in your phones. But we believe hydroxide, RK Equity, and my partner Rodney puts together, you know, supply demand analysis, uh, sees a, a turning point to majority hydroxide from uh, 2023, 2024, and will be two thirds of the market by 2028. The number one company, Albemarle, this just shows various chemistries and do they use, you know, carbonate or hydroxide? The movement is to hydroxide, if you could look at this slide more carefully later. The number two lithium company in the world is Ganfeng, a Chinese company. They just signed you know, last year two significant offtakes with Volkswagen and BMW. This is Western Australian hard rock lithium converted in China, um, again, for hydroxide. So Ganfeng is winning big in hydroxide. The, the big three 
for the EV market is Albemarle, Ganfeng, and also a US company called Livent. However, most of the lithium today is 80% is processed in China. So the whole, again, this is terra factories and lithium geopolitics. There is an issue here, just like rare earths and others, too much supply processed in China. And that's why Tesla during battery day announced they are getting into the processing of lithium business in the United States. And over time, I think North Carolina and Europe have opportunities to develop into chemical to cathode hydroxide hubs. Lithium has been a bit of oversupply over the last you know, two years. Again, that was why it fell, but we believe hydroxide will be in shortage within 12 months um, and a bit longer for, for carbonate. Pre-battery day, we were forecasting 2 million tons of lithium carbonate. There's 1.7 million two new tons off of a market that's only 300,000 tons. So that, that means a six times or more increase in lithium supply needs to come on stream within 10 years. That's equivalent to 50 new 20,000 ton hydroxide plants. That's about $30 billion in CapEx at an average cost of about $600 million for 20,000 tons a year capacity. That's a lot of lithium plants that need to be built in a short period of time. Those estimates were pre-battery day. Post-battery day, this is what demand could look like in a world of you know, terra factories. Again, ludicrous demand mode. As a result of all of this, you know, equity animal, lithium equity animal spirits have uh, spurred, uh, spurred up. So I say recharging lithium developers. RK Equity keeps track every month. This is our lithium market scoreboard as of October 14th. You'll see month to date, you know, since September 1st, year to date, a lot in green there. And on the right, you could see a breakdown of by geography and by type, you know, rock, clay, brine, or DLE. You could see that most of the developing stories are hard rock. Tesla is basically saying the it's an OEM taking matters into their own hands, right? They are getting into the lithium processing business because they see a shortage coming and they can't rely on the Albemarle and Livents of the world but they're not getting directly into the mining. Instead, they signed a five-year agreement to get spodumene supplied by Piedmont, but they're very focused on shortening the distance. On the right-hand side, you see they're advocating an 80% reduction in the kilogram per kilometer, right? So they're shortening travel distance, securing sustainable supply. This is how things are moving forward. And we may see something like this in Europe as well. And again, they're picking hard rock as the preferred feedstock. So they are collating, co-locating lithium conversion. And you know the clays, they talked a lot about clay. Anyone who's watching this may have heard Elon Musk talk a lot about clay. But the reality is, watch what he does, not what he says. And what he's doing is partnering for hard rock. I run you know, a YouTube channel and a podcast and everything that I do is kind of laced with uh, classic rock music preferences. So this is a kiss, you keep it simple, stupid. Again, if we need 50 lithium hydroxide plants and probably another 25 carbonate plants, uh, how do you pick? Like what's a project developer checklist? If you could find just like gold, you know, it's 100,000 ounces you know, for 10 years, in lithium, if it's 20,000 ounces for 20 years, costs five to 600 million to build, 6,000 OPEX or lower, that's a project you know, probably worth doing. If you're focused on a proven technology by 2025, but new technologies will be needed and with a 2030 vision, those could be examined as well. Mining friendly jurisdiction, tax friendly jurisdiction, predictable you know, and preferably non-China supply to feed non-China demand. And as with all companies, you know, competent management with skin in the game. So an example of KISS is, you know, is also having a clean all equity capital structure. So I joke about uh, the material girl like a version. Look what happens when Piedmont was touched for the very first time by Tesla. The stock went from, you know, $8. Uh, they did a financing at $6.30 in June. And they did another deal at 25, I'm sorry, said so $6.3 and $25 just last week. The stock was as high as $50 after the Tesla announcement, an absolute screamer of uh, a, a, a stock performance. Here's just more advertisements for me. I mentioned, you know, we do have a podcast, which is now available on YouTube and also 
uh, producing shorter videos on Rockstock channel. So I would encourage you to look up Rockstock channel on YouTube as well as Lithium Ion Rocks. And we're also available on SoundCloud. Again, uh, I'm not an investment advisor or broker dealer. So nothing that you've heard here is investment advice. And this disclaimer uh, shows a number of the companies we've advised over the last five years or are invested in. Thanks very much.